Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching the Breakfast News with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin with the latest headlines this morning. All eyes on Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu as he prepares to present his Made in Rail budget today. Expectations of proposals around Make in India initiatives besides safety and security. The government defends the land acquisition bill amid rising protests. Modi government hints at consultations with the parties on the proposed legislation. Swine flu claims 68 more lives, pushing overall death toll to 943 this year alone. Centre sends teams to states to help in tackling the crisis. And Russian President Vladimir Putin issues fresh warning to Ukraine threatening to stop gas supplies. US warns of more sanctions against Russia. First up in the bulletin and our top focus, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu will present his maiden rail budget today in Parliament. A private investment in railways is expected to be one of the biggest priorities for Prabhu. Industry expects uh, clearer indications on public-private partnership and FDI models. Here's more. That the Indian Railway suffers from an acute shortage of finances is widely known. What is not known is how the railway minister will tackle this issue. When Suresh Prabhu presents his maiden rail budget in parliament on Thursday, he is expected to make a tightrope walk as he tries to bridge the huge gap in finances. सामान्य यात्रियों के सुविधा के हिसाब से एक रेल नेटवर्क बने, उनकी अपेक्षाओं के अनुरूप रेल नेटवर्क होने, इसका पूरा प्रयास होगा। So all eyes will be on his announcements regarding passenger and freight fares. The Modi government's first budget saw passenger fares being increased by 14.2% and freight by 6.5%. But even a decrease in diesel prices is unlikely to result in a trickle-down effect on fares. And that's because the fuel adjustment cost linked tariff revision policy will be affected by the fact that electricity cost has gone up by over 4%. Given his reformer image, Suresh Prabhu could lay a road map for attracting private investment into the railways. He is also expected to go slow in announcing new trains and projects given the fund crunch. The focus could instead be on safety and security, cleanliness and modernization. Hills are something very important. Hills, hills, I mean, you have to protect uh, the hills and uh, I think uh, we expect that uh, the government uh, not just makes an affirmation and a commitment but also releases some grant, some money to the kitty so that we get some expansion of railways in our state. We have a that the Lahol Spiti is the budget of the railway budget. According to reports, a lot of suggestions from the Prime Minister's office have been incorporated in the budget. While a fair hike is unlikely, a cess for cleanliness cannot be ruled out. There can also be an increased focus on joint ventures and FDI. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Joining me for a chat this morning to talk about the rail budget is the editorial consultant of uh, the DNA Parsa Venkateshwar Rao. Good morning, Parsa. Thank you for joining me on the program. You know, this is Suresh Prabhu's maiden budget. It's going to be the government's first full budget, full rail budget as well. You know, what are the expectations from the budget? Do you expect it to be a populist budget or do you think Suresh Prabhu's hands are tied? Um, the railway minister's hands are really tied because of uh, the financial constraints and it is the case with all the railway ministers. Mm -hmm. He will not be the first to uh, be facing this kind of a challenge. I think what is expected of uh, Suresh Prabhu, given the man he is, because he is very serious, he engages in the subject he deals with, that perhaps he would come up with some innovative approach to deal with the challenge of railway mm. transport. Mm. Uh, that's where the uh, real interest lies in. What is the kind of new things that he wants to bring in ideas uh, to sort of uh, restructure or change uh, the uh, the rail system which is the largest in the country and the largest in the world public transport. Uh, in terms of infusing funds, uh, the private public private partnership has been uh, uh, going on for some time. However, uh, there is not much clarity on it is there? Uh, no, the clarity is there but uh, 
the government wants the private uh, uh, initiative uh, uh, investors to come in, but the private sector is not too keen because mm. they are not too sure whether they can uh, have any uh, reap any profits uh, from it immediately. Mm. That is uh, one of the things. And secondly, the earlier railway ministers tried to uh, make uh, take advantage of the railway uh, assets all over the country to generate uh, revenue. But that too didn't work. I mean, a more uh, uh, capital intensive use of the railway uh, lands and other things. But nobody went about it in a systematic fashion. The immediate and the direct thing people say is the fares, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that freight fares should be increased and uh, uh, the uh, passenger fares should be kept low so because it uh, caters to the largely poor people and uh, middle class people who cannot really take the burden. Uh, now that is where the tightrope walking comes in, that the demand for transport is growing uh, uh, year by year and that's a fact and we are not too sure whether the railways are gearing up to meet the growing demand. Indeed, indeed. You know there's also been much talk about modernization, talk about you know bullet trains, talk about that is where, uh, No, it is uh, actually if we uh, uh, take away the, uh, the fluff about modernization, mm. the, it boils down to this that because your passenger uh, uh, growth, uh, uh, passenger growth is so much for the demand is so much in the railways that you need to modernize, mm. you need more trains, you need faster trains, Hmm. and you need to connect places because uh, uh, the ease of uh, reaching the workplace becomes uh, uh, I mean uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ease of working uh, reaching the workplace becomes better hmm. so that you know the the congestion in the cities can be uh, sort of uh, reduced do you, the whole do you see any more announcements as far as modernization is concerned because in the last real budget there were quite a few announcements made in this budget do you expect more of that no, I think the uh, he, in this uh, budget, as I am seeing it, it, it is really the revolves around the personality of Suresh Prabhu. Mm. Given the serious man is, I think he will come up with a solider plan, solider approach, but no immediate uh, things. You know, they will take time to implement. They will time take time to uh, uh, kick off, but it will make a, a real change in the uh, railway system which mm. is badly needed. Apart from the regular things that you have to modernize the tracks, you have to sort of uh, replenish your uh, uh, stock, rolling stock, you know everything is falling apart in the railways you know and it is a miracle that it works and so many people are dependent on it. So I think it is time for the government and for the railway ministers to stop talking about reforms, big ticket reforms and modernizing and uh, you know the colorful plans mm. and if they really get down and there is so much to do, there mm. is so much to do and the private sector is very niggardly in uh, wanting to take part in the uh, uh, in the railways. Indeed. Uh, yeah, because there are no immediate gains. Uh, the private sector might want to invest in the, uh, a, uh, the civil aviation sector. The uh, private sector might want to do a bit in the road transport, mm. but not in the railways. So the railways will always remain the responsibility of the government. It might have to infuse more funds and it will have to find more innovative ways. Yes. And the innovation okay. way innovative ways of finding funds I think will be the hallmark of this budget. Indeed, that will be the hallmark of this budget, very rightly said there, Parsa. Do stay with us. I'm going to continue uh, on the rail budget path now. Uh, there is a lot of hope riding on Suresh Prabhu when he presents his maiden rail budget today. Let's listen in to some of the reactions from the commuters on what they expect from this budget. custom duty गोल्ड के बास के ऊपर डाली गई है जो 10 परसेंट है वो किसी भी हालत में घटा कर 4 परसेंट की जाए मैं ये उम्मीद करता हूँ कि भारत सरकार जो है वो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर को जो समस्याएं आ रही हैं और मेक इन इंडिया जो अपना प्रोग्राम है उसके मद्देनजर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर के लिए कुछ ऐसा एनवायरमेंट पैदा करेगी जिससे कि भारतीय इन्वेस्टर और ग्लोबल इन्वेस्टर जो है वो दोनों इस देश में पैसा लगा सके देखिए महंगाई के हिसाब से मैं समझता हूँ रेल बजट फिर बढ़ेगा अगर रेल बजट बढ़ाती है सरकार तो सुविधा दे सुविधा के साथ अगर रेल बजट बढ़ाती है तो जनता को कोई दिक्कत नहीं इट्स हाई टाइम द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू रियलाइज दे हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट द हिल्स एंड दे हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट 
how long can the canopy of hills of a green canopy save the plains Uh, Pastor, coming back to you now, we heard what the common man wants really from this budget and the expectations are really high as far as uh, the railway minister is concerned. But you know, there's been much talk about uh, an investment splurge in this particular budget. Do you see that happening? Because uh, they say that the oil prices are almost at an all-time low and it's, uh, you know, at close to about $40 a barrel. So based on that, do you see an investment splurge in this rail budget? I think the low oil price, we must remember, is a temporary phenomenon, mm. class for one year, and uh, the benefits you get from it are get absorbed, you know, for various, because there was a time we are coming from a very, very high oil price uh, system where uh, uh, people were sustaining losses, the government, railways and everyone, and then it comes to a very low price, so it's almost like making up for the losses, you know. Mm. I don't think mm. we are gaining uh, too much from the low oil prices and we are not very sure that they will remain at that low point uh, for too long. Yes, it's a window of opportunity to uh, sort of uh, save. Now, the question is of investments, you mm. know. I think the government investment will be there uh, much more than uh, anyone else. The private sector in India, I do not see them sort of showing any great interest, unfortunately. I mean, they haven't grasped the potential of Indian Railways uh, in expanding the infrastructure and how it will uh, kickstart the uh, the economic growth rate, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, we are now left with government and the other option is uh, the foreign investor. The foreign investors do seem to understand that there is a potential in India. Mm -hmm. China sees a potential in India. Uh, some of the European countries see a potential in India. So, uh, the approach should be to cleverly bring them in mm. and once they come in, perhaps the Indian private sector players will understand, okay, they are missing out on a chance and they might jump, out, uh, jump onto the bandwagon. All right. We are, I, I, we'll have to wait and see if that really happens yeah. or not. But, you know, one thing that has always happened with every rail budget is that, you know, the state that the uh, minister comes from usually gets a good package. Uh, as far as the rail budget is concerned. Do we see that happening this time around? Maybe Maharashtra getting more trains, special schemes or something like that? Again, my understanding of Suresh Prabhu as a person is that he will um, avoid the, um, the gimmickry and any populist gestures. Mm. As a politician, yes, he cares for, uh, uh, he knows that something popular has to be done, but he will not go out of the way uh, 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 and play to the gallery as it were. Mm. I think he is going to address the, uh, the uh, long-standing problems of railways. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much, Parsavankteshwar Rao, for joining us on the program this morning and uh, sharing your views on what to expect from the real budget. All eyes will, will indeed be on uh, the Lok Sabha today where uh, Suresh Prabhu will present his maiden rail budget. On that note, we'll slip into a short break. Coming up on the program, environmentalist R.K. Pachauri seeks anticipatory bail plea today in sexual harassment case. That and much more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Dissecting the Union Budget 2015-16 A power-packed panel of experts in our Delhi studios Live discussions from the Bombay Stock Exchange and IIM Bangalore The Finance Minister's first post-budget interview Watch the complete coverage 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. through February 28th on Rajya Sabha Television. Kathak Nuti ko samarpit kalakar. Ghana Ghana Guru Guru. Sab koi meri pitaji ki rajnitik virasat ke baat karte hain. Lekin meri ye jo kala ki virasat hai, wo meri mother ki hai. Chhod ki lakhi sab chhi. Jahan hai. परंपरा और नई सोच का अनोखा संगम पूरा कॉन्सेप्ट से लेके शुरू करके एक थॉट उससे लेके एक जो फाइनल प्रोडक्शन जिसको हम स्टेज में प्रेजेंट करते हैं ऑडियंस के सामने ये जो जर्नी है इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जर्नी मिली शख्सियत में शर्मिष्ठा मुखर्जी से शनिवार रात साढ़े दस बजे और रविवार सुबह ग्यारह बजे सिर्फ राज्य सभा टीवी आरोप
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the government has defended the proposed land acquisition bill in the face of intensified protests by other political parties. Uh, the bill, which has been termed as anti-farmer by the opposition, faces a tough resistance in both houses of parliament. With more BJP allies joining the resistance yesterday, it has made it tough for the government to garner support or gather a consensus. A day after activist Anna Hazare, a Congress mega rally titled Zameen Vapsi Andolan at the same venue, Jantar Mantar in central Delhi. Over a thousand farmers were present as senior Congress leaders lashed out at the government for siding with industrialists against them, betraying promises, vowing that the ordinance would not be allowed through parliament. Kisan ka paksh Congress party sadev rakhti aai hai aur aage bhi rakhegi aur is किसान विरोधी ऑर्डिनेंस को कभी पास नहीं होने देगी भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने इसे जब मैं संसदीय कार्य मंत्री था इसे सपोर्ट किया था इसको इसके पक्ष में वोट दी थी और नौ महीनों में अब ये बदल गए इनका सही चेहरा सामने आया है हम इसका कट्टर विरोध करेंगे बीजेपी आला शिवसेना रामविलास पासवान एल and Raju Shetty's Shetkari Sangatan spoke against the legislation. Another BJP ally, Shiromani Akali Dal, had opposed the bill on Tuesday. While sources said Prime Minister Narendra Modi is clear that major changes will not be made to one of his key reforms, his senior minister Nitin Gadgari said that the government is open for consultations. Project vital to national security or defense of India, every part thereof, जिसमें बॉर्डर रोड आते हैं डिफेंस की सीमा और की भागों में जाते हैं उसमें से हमने इसको ओबिट करने के लिए उनको सुझाया है देश की सुरक्षा सबसे बड़ी है और उसके लिए इसको एग्जाम करने के लिए हमने कहा जो कंसेंट की कंडीशन और सोशल इंपैक्ट का जो बात है उसकी बात अकॉर्डिंग टू बीजेपी सोर्सेज द गवर्नमेंट वुड बी एबल टू गेट ऑल द एलाइज ऑन बोर्ड बाय द टाइम द बिल इज पुट टू वोट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Moving on now, the death toll in uh, swine flu cases across the country has soared to 943 so far with 17 more fresh casualties reported from Gujarat and Maharashtra. Even the number of positive cases has uh, crossed 16,000. Health Minister J.P. Nadda said that teams were sent to guide and assist the state governments on H1N1 virus as per need. Apart from the regular medicines, the ministry is also supervising the usage of traditional medicines. Here's more. 68 more people died since yesterday across India to the swine flu virus, which is increasingly taking shape of a pandemic. Gujarat saw eight more deaths, while Maharashtra recorded nine more since Wednesday. Four of them were in Aurangabad, one of the worst affected districts in Maharashtra. Shashakiya Vaidhikiya Mahavidyalaya aur Rugunalaya Ghati mein kal tak joh hai kal aur parso mila ke chaar patient ka death ho gaya hai. उनमें से तीन पेशेंट कल गुजर गए और एक पेशेंट परसों गुजर गया है अभी तो वार्ड में फिलहाल आठ पेशेंट है उनमें से चार पेशेंट पॉजिटिव है और चार पेशेंट सस्पेक्टेड है With the number of positive cases crossing 16,000 so far, precautionary steps have been taken in many states to counter the virus. Some of them even drew criticism. In Gujarat, section 144 has been imposed in Ahmedabad after it recorded more than 100 cases in a span of 24 hours. अभी स्वाइन फ्लू को रोकने के लिए सीआरपीसी 144 के अंतर्गत रेस्ट्रिक्टिव ऑर्डर्स हमने पास किए हैं जिसके अंतर्गत कोई भी रैली करनी हो बड़ी सभा करनी हो मास गैदरिंग करनी हो तो उस केस में प्रायर परमिशन कॉम्पिटेंट अथॉरिटी की लेनी पड़ेगी साथ में जो सभा का स्थल है जगह है जहां पे सभा करनी है उस पर प्रोटेक्टिव मास्क जो होता है वो फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट प्रोवाइड करना पड़ेगा Meanwhile, the government said necessary steps have been taken to stop the virus from spreading further and causing more casualties. Medical teams are being sent to guide and assist state governments on H1N1 virus as per need. Rajya Sarkar ki aur hamari puri tayari hai usko combat karne ki. Isolation room ho, uske liye medicine ho, aur health health aur family aur par ke tarah se humne to kya hi hai. Ayush bhi hamari jo ministry hai, main uska in charge hu. हम भी ओमेपति आयुर्वेदी काढ़ा हो या ओमेपति नमस्ते वो सभी सप्लाई करने के लिए हमने ऑर्डर दे दिए हैं और अभी थोड़ा थोड़ा काम में आ रहा है। Making a statement in the Rajya Sabha for a second day, Health Minister J.P. Nadda warned people to be careful. He assured that medicines and facilities to tackle the disease are in place. 
Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Well, just 12 days after taking over the reins in the capital, the Aam Admi Party today fulfilled its biggest poll promise, free water and cheaper electricity for all. We will explore how it will go about doing that economically, but first let's go, let's uh, bring you this report. Come March, Delhi Heights can expect a big relief in their water and power bills. The Kejriwal government today announced free water up to 20,000 litres for every household, which will benefit 18 lakh families and a 50% cut in power bills to bring relief to 90% of the consumers. Today, Delhi government has been able to get 400 units to the Delhi government. आधे दाम पर बिजली देने का फैसला किया है और जो परिवार 400 यूनिट से कम बिजली खर्च कर रहे हैं उनको एक मार्च से इसका फायदा मिलने लगेगा अभी 400 यूनिट से जो ऊपर खर्च करेंगे यानी कि जो 401 यूनिट खर्च करेंगे उनको पूरा बिल देना पड़ेगा दिल्ली में 20,000 लीटर तक जो परिवार पानी इस्तेमाल करते हैं 20,000 लीटर तक का जो पानी इस्तेमाल करने वाले परिवार हैं उनके पानी और सीवर के चार्जेस सरकार माफ करने का ऐलान कर रही है बट हे इज द कैच इफ द यूज ऑफ पावर एंड वाटर एक्सीज द लिमिट्स बिल्स हैव टू बी पेड इन फुल बट फॉर नाउ दिल्ली हाइट्स आर होपफुल सरकार ने जो फैसला लिया है सही लिया है जो बिजली के दाम कम किए हैं वो आम पब्लिक के लिए बहुत अच्छा है सही है जो और पानी भी पानी भी सही है कम किया है हाँ पब्लिक के लिए अच्छा किया है लेकिन उनको काम करने के लिए कुछ समय तो चाहिए ना ऐसा तो नहीं है जादू की छड़ी तो है नहीं किसी के बाद भी घुमाई और काम हो गया पिछले गवर्नमेंट है इतनी सारी गवर्नमेंट आई है हिंदुस्तान में आज तक किसी ने क्या करके दिखा है खाली वादे करते हैं और हवा में रह जाते वादे जो भी है कुछ तो है इससे पहले तो कुछ भी नहीं था आधे भी है मतलब कुछ तो कम हो रहा है मान लो अगर आधे से एक यूनिट फालतू है तो पूरा ले रहे हैं चलो ठीक है मगर उसके आधे तक तो सही ले रहे हैं वो No surprise, the BJP is apprehensive, claiming the initiative may be good, but there are still many questions on who will bear the brunt of cost. The coming months will be crucial for our Madhmi party, and Delhi will wait and see if Kejriwal's government can walk the talk. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Well, let's now bring you up to date with the other national news and updates in our segment nationwide. Our Chief Minister Nitish Kumar will seek confidence vote on March 11th to prove his majority. The decision regarding the trust vote was taken at the first cabinet meeting of Kumar's fourth term as Chief Minister. The floor test will happen a day before the government tables the state budget. Two militants were killed in an encounter in Jammu Kashmir's Shopian district on Wednesday. Four army personnel, including a major, were also injured in the gun battle. The encounter began after security forces received specific intelligence input about the presence of militants in the area. As a joint team of police and army began a search operation in the area, the militants opened fire on them, triggering an encounter. A Delhi court will hear the anticipatory bail plea filed by environmentalist R.K. Pachori in a sexual harassment case. He was hospitalized on Wednesday after stepping down as chairman of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. On Monday, the court had granted Pachori interim protection from arrest in the case. Well, let's take a look now at what's lined up for the day in our segment, The Day Ahead. After giving the final touches to the government formation in Jammu and Kashmir, PDP and BJP are expected to make the common minimum program public. PDP Chief Mehbubha Mufti and BJP President Amit Shah met earlier to finalize the common minimum program. The new government is likely to be sworn in on March 1st. The Aam Aadmi Party will hold its first national executive meeting today in Kapas Heda. Uh, in the wake of the party's landslide victory in Delhi, senior leaders will be discussing the party's plans throughout the country. Many voices have called for up to fight elections in different parts of the country. The Department of Telecom is scheduled to hold a presentation today on the upcoming Spectrum Auction System and Procedures. The session will detail the auction design rules and electronic auction platform for all stakeholders. The government plans to sell the second generation or 2G and third generation 3G radio waves in an auction schedule to start from 4th March.
Moving on to some international news now. Ukraine and Russia could be heading for another standoff as uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin demanded prepayments for gas supplies to Ukraine. Ukraine has just enough supplies to cover its needs for three to four days, but after that it would face difficulties. Meanwhile, the U.S. has warned that more sanctions are in the pipeline if Russia doesn't budge. The rift between Ukraine and Russia just seems to get deeper. The latest warning by Russia on gas supplies to Ukraine is likely to flare tensions. Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened to halt gas supplies if Ukraine does not pay in advance. The move could disrupt flows to Europe for the fourth time in a decade. Газпром полностью исполняет свои обязательства контрактные и будет это делать. Предоплаты, которая произведена украинской стороной, осталось на поставку газа на трое, на четверо суток. Если предоплаты не будет, Газпром в соответствии с этим контрактом и дополнением к нему поставки приостановят. The West accuses Moscow of using energy as a geopolitical weapon to keep Ukraine under its influence. The United States also warned that additional sanctions against Russia could be in the offing should there be any untoward developments. So the measurement now is are we on a downward track to actually seeing an implementation or is there now a Mariupol or some other effort that may be taking place which would immediately merit a much more significant uh, uh, response which is teed up and that could be very serious next level of sanctions coupled with other choices the president may or may not make. Meanwhile, European Union is trying to convene a meeting with Russia and Ukraine as soon as possible to discuss the dispute over unpaid gas bills. We, of course, are trying to make sure that uh, we will keep the, the winter package intact and we are trying to convene trilateral meeting between Ukrainian and uh, Russian uh, uh, energy ministers and, uh, and me and the Commission very, very soon and we are looking for the, for the possible date. Russia had cut off gas supplies to Ukraine last June but restored them only in December after a European broker deal. Under the deal, Ukraine is required to pay in advance for gas but now it has said it will not make any further payments without new guarantees because Moscow failed to deliver gas that had already been purchased this weekend. The winter gas deal is due to expire at the end of next month. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Well, at least 124 people have been killed in Afghanistan after heavy winter snow caused deadly avalanches in the northern part of the country. Officials claim that it was the worst avalanche in, uh, an, in the area in over 30 years. Authorities have warned of an imminent humanitarian emergency in areas most severely hit by the bad weather. At least 124 people have been killed in Afghanistan in some of the worst avalanches there for 30 years. The avalanche buried homes across four northeast provinces. The worst hit appeared to be Panjshir province, about 100 kilometers northeast of the capital Kabul, where the avalanche destroyed or damaged around 100 homes. Rescue teams had been dispatched to the affected areas and casualties were expected to rise. <laughs> The heavy snowstorms which began early on Tuesday hampered rescue efforts. Snowfall from the storm was nearly three feet deep in places and fallen trees blocked roads in the Panjshir Valley. Officials warned of an imminent humanitarian emergency in areas most severely hit by the bad weather with snow sweeping through villages and blocking off roads. اقوال ما توقع ما از دولت عزیز که کسای که زیر آور بار مانده دیگه چون یا مهاجر هستن، مسافر هستن، مردم مستحق هستن ای هم کاری بکنن که اینو از زیر آور برای یکی Large parts of Afghanistan have been covered in snow as a major storm interrupted an otherwise mild and dry winter with heavy snow set to last for two more days after an unusually dry winter led to fears of drought Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV That's it in this edition of the Breakfast News. Have a nice day.